Hey, you guys. Okay, let me talk to y'all a minute before I get ready for work. I have a few minutes. And I want to talk about triggers. Because while I'm thinking about it, <clears throat> I put out a couple videos last night. I'm going to start promoting my YouTube channel a little bit more. <clears throat> ah! Are you still there? <laughs> I never know whether I'm going to post this video to Facebook or YouTube, whichever one it'll upload to more quickly. But I'm going to start promoting my YouTube channel on Facebook a little bit more. I'm trying to make it to a thousand subscribers. I'm getting close. Um, I put out a couple videos yesterday, one on Facebook, one on YouTube, talking about love and obsession. I'm going to be getting deeply off into that topic with several videos. My experiences and what obsession really is, even though people think it's so hot and so attractive. You haven't seen the darker side of it, okay? Um, if you still feel that way. Um, I put out a, another video on my Facebook. Um, I just discussing childhood stuff. Anyway, I want to talk about tr triggers. Now, the twin flame concept is something that's very interesting to me. My um, last partner and I discussed it a lot. It was not something I even thought about until he and I had been together eh, about three years. And I began to see some things and, you know, more spiritual reading and studies and research. And, you know, I've always kind of been on that wavelength, that path. And um, I knew that he and I had a lot of work to do. We, you know, we had a lot of psychological work to go through. We had a lot of deep conversations about stuff like that. And um, we really were triggering each other in a lot of ways from our old wounds coming up to the surface. We triggered the hell out of each other, you know? And sometimes not even deliberately, not even on purpose. We mirrored each other in a lot of ways, too. Things that I could see in him that I was the same way, but maybe he was more extreme about it. Or things he could see in me, and vice versa, that both of us needed to take a look at in each other. Things that really, you know... Alright, so... This is a big topic. I won't have time to do it all in one video today. But you can think of this in terms of logically or psychologically. Or you can think of it in spiritual terms. However you want to look at it. But people do come into our lives. And they do trigger the shit out of us sometimes. Um, you know, and the whole twin flame theory. That is something that I could get into and go in depth on for days. A lot of people, you know, I don't want to tell you what's right for you to believe. I'm not here to convert anybody or tell anybody that. All you can do is what resonates with your soul. What really works for you. What, what seems to be working in your relationship or what it looks like to you or what your belief is. Okay? That's, that's really all I can say about that. But for me personally and the way I understand it and the way that makes the most sense to me is that the twin flame theory is not for everyone. Not everyone is here on this earth um, signed up for a twin flame situation. And a twin flame thing is not the lucky strike. It's not, yay, I won the lottery in love. It's not, no. Basically what the theory on it is is that basically before you incarnated here, you did sign up with someone to come into each other's lives at a certain time, period, and trigger each other to do this fucking work. And my last relationship, it was plain as day. I knew that's who it was when he showed up, okay? I had had a couple of other, well, really just one, uh, spiritual situations before him um, that really taught me a lot, but it wasn't, they weren't, the one that was going to take me all the way there. And this one did. The places I needed to go, even though it was fucking painful, places I needed to go, the very last puzzle pieces 
that had been going on all the way since my childhood. Things that I thought I was over or had already healed or that I was above that. Or, oh yes, when they come, if you are on a twin flame life path, it's an experience. It's not really a person. It's like an experience that you have to kind of go through. Um, anyway, I don't want to get too far into that because I really, I, re I really want to talk more about triggers. Um, now, this is not everybody's belief, and if it's not for you, it's not for you. It resonates with me because I have had a very spiritual lifetime. I have had those types of mentors, teachers, guides, people come into my life. Some of them were romantic involvement. Some of them weren't. Um, I've had a lot of that in my lifetime. I'm a person who, if I'm in a romantic involvement, I am on that life path where it generally doesn't go like peaches and roses. It's been, it's always been generally a lot of hard work, a lot of spiritual work, a lot of transformation going on, people coming together from different backgrounds, um, traumatic backgrounds, addictions going on, and people learning from each other. I like to look at it that way because it's been that way. But you know, yes, along the way, there were some trauma bondings and some codependency going on, some loss of identity, some broken hearts. All of that is included in one package. But to me, it's all, it's all, you got, you can't have one without, you know, that's just the way I look at it in my life. You can't really have one without the other until you do a certain amount of your healing work. And that is what I've been working on most of my life. Most of your relationships aren't going to work out if you're not to a point of healing so that you can attract a proper frequency. See, like Teal Swan talks about. I'll do another video about that sometime. We have a tendency to get with people who are not on our same frequency match. And if you're on two different vibrations trying to force each other to match up, it's not going to happen. Even if you're sexually attracted, even if you have great chemistry, whatever what have you, you have similar values. If you're not really living on the same frequency, vibrating on the same frequency, really headed towards the same path, um, it's so hard to make that work. It just really is. But anyway, guys, that's to dibble and dabble a little bit into the twin flame theory. I do have a video on the YouTube, on the channel about it. Um, but I want to do another one to, to, uh, reinforce what I feel about the twin flame situation and what I've learned from it. Ultimately, yes, though, I think for people who did sign up for that kind of thing in life, you know, other people, they have relationships in their life and they sit on the porch and they drink lemonade and that's fine. Many of them didn't come from traumatic backgrounds. Many of them don't have that kind of freaking work to do. That's their life. It's, it is what it is. They And they don't understand people like us who do come from traumatic backgrounds, who are supposed to meet up, who are supposed to do a lot of triggering each other and transmuting energy. And it's just different individuals, man. That's why one person cannot sit up on this planet and tell you what's really right for your life path, your relationship, what it was supposed to be, what you were supposed to learn, what you got out of it, what you didn't. It is what it is. But yeah, that's what I think about the whole twin flame shit. It's a person that's going to come in and they are going to trigger up a lot of that shit that, damn, I thought I was over that or oh shit, I didn't know I could feel this way. Or a lot of times they will activate something in you. They will take you, they have the ability to take you to a place that you didn't think you would ever go or go again. They show you things that, yes, that you need to dig up and stop being afraid of to work on in yourself. And a lot of people that hit the twin flame experience get really defensive. It's not fun. It is not fun. It's a lot of hard work. And um, that's why, you know, they've got that whole, if you look it up and study it, they've got that whole twin flame runner. And the twins always go into separation because 
the whole damn point to them coming together in the first freaking place is not really so they can just sit there and be toxic with each other. Hell no. They have stuff to purge and to learn. And you can't always purge all that stuff right up on top of each other. Just sitting up all nice and content and happy and enabling each other. No, a lot of times they have to go apart to do that work. Uh, and it sucks because they will attract karmic partners who are going to help them learn some karmic lessons, things they could not see when they were with their twin experience person, things that they were being stubborn about or couldn't see or couldn't understand. And then they go in separation and, and in the separation time, they are supposed to be doing their healing work. They're supposed to be doing the work that they just couldn't do while they were together because they kept banging heads about it. And um, the twin, there's something so intense about that relationship that they just can't, they have to get apart for a minute because it's so intense. It's so overwhelming. All of the triggers from childhood. All of the wounding. Um, and it's a mix. It's a mix of real love for the first time. Maybe ever. Like, I feel like, you know, I have felt real love before in my life. I loved people. Absolutely. But when you're 40 and you're on a whole different level of spiritual consciousness, love is something entirely different. And you start, you just, when you meet this person and you start doing all this work with them and all these triggers are going off and you feel this healing together, just something that you weren't able to have before, um, you know, that, that you may have had in bits and pieces with other people, but not, not all the way, you know? And so it'll be this mix of overwhelming love like for this person and healing and affection and protection and just this something that you sense within each other this beautiful almost I don't know how to explain it but at the same time you are triggering up fear terror vulnerability um control uh because the situation is just so intense because it triggers up all of that for healing and if one person doesn't want to do the work they want to stay like that because they're so afraid and there's addictions involved okay it can get crazy and so a lot of times they have to go apart to finish the work. That's what is in the teachings. And that's what I've observed in my lifetime. That's what makes sense. It's the only thing that could be done or you can't survive it. It's just, you know, and a lot of people now, if abuse comes into the picture, mistreatment, disrespect, addiction, a lot of times this shit it's not perfect. It doesn't always go as we wish it would go. It doesn't always go as planned, but it, also doesn't necessarily mean that that person was a monster it doesn't necessarily mean that you know but these people I do believe that yes there are certain people that come in our lives sometimes there's more than one I believe that we can belong to some type of soul group or over soul that and we all you know what I'm saying we come here and we have these lessons to meet up and learn and I think it's really fascinating um and if you watch at certain times in people's lives, pay attention to how you're feeling at that time. What did you realize after that person entered your life? What did you start to see? You know? Um, and so that's kind of how that goes. And I want to talk about triggers a little bit before I get off here. Here's the thing. I do not condone abuse, mistreatment, disrespect, toxicity. I don't want to stay up in no shit like that. And even if it rips my heart out, if that's the way it is in my relationship, I have to let it go. I have to let it go. I want my peace. I want my order. I want my concentration. I want my health. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't realize how you have to suffer to protect that. You will be lonely sometimes you will have to push people away um 
a lot of people on the outside looking in think it's easy. Oh, we want to go over there with her because she's got this quiet little sanctuary. And, you know, she's got this little energy. And we want to come and get some of her peace. And, you know, she's nice and she's empathic. And they don't seem to understand. When you walk up in that motherfucking shit, that motherfucking shit is hard to come by. It's because a lot of the times I have to be a fierce motherfucker and I have to guard that shit. It's because I can't live like like what you've been used to, running and a ripping and any old body and not and coming in and out anytime they motherfucking want and snatching me here and snatching me there and this one's here and that one's there and people all up in my shit. That doesn't fly in my life. And, you know, a lot of people can't handle that. They can't handle the way I need to protect that energy, protect that sanctuary. But yet they want to come to me for my peace. They want to come to me for healing. They want to come to me when they're torn apart and fragmented and anxiety ridden. But yet they don't want to understand what it takes to protect peace like that means you have to give up toxic people pleasing it means you have to start really doing the work to become whole within yourself it means that you have to not give it means you give zero fucks about fitting in with the crowd it means you give two shits if you lose everybody and you have to do it all by yourself then that's what you're going to do to stay true to yourself and protect that sanctuary that peace a lot of people want that shit but they don't want to do the work it takes to keep it, to protect it, to maintain it. I'm bored. They want to come and get all full on your healing and your protection and your peace and your, you know, mindfulness and trying to be healthy and whatever. But after they get all full on it, I'm bored. I want to go be reckless and, and tormented again. And I want to go destroy myself again and... That's how a lot of these toxic ass people are who just aren't ready, who are so scared to graduate and ascend from their wounded inner child. Now, basically, that is what the twin comes for, to take your hand, and usually one twin is more awakened than the other as the studies go. Um, I believe it's usually the divine feminine. Um, who is generally, supposedly, a little bit more advanced in her spiritual awakening and ascension process. And they get together and they're supposed to kind of awaken each other and inspire each other's spiritual ascension and growth. But there's just so much involved in it and it can get painful. Even if it's not abusive and toxic, it's, it can still get painful. Because a lot of times they still have to go into separation. They have some work to do on their own. And along the way, there will be temptations. There will be karmics, karmic partners that come in to teach people lessons and test. And all kinds of shit will be going on. But that's the thing I want to talk about, guys. Just think about it. If we walked on this earth without ever being triggered by anyone. And without ever suffering through anything without ever going through a betrayal? How would we learn? I'm confused. How, how would we ascend? How would we grow? How would we be thrown into that dark night of the soul? How would we get to that point where we feel it so deeply and so painfully to get so sick and tired of being sick and tired? If we didn't go through some kind of suffering or pain or trigger or somebody made a mistake against us or somehow triggered this up in us, for those of us that are carrying a lot of childhood wounds and darkness and pain or whatever, some people that even aren't, that people that just need to grow spiritually and emotionally, if somebody didn't trigger it, how would it happen? It wouldn't. Just say it. You know, for these folks out here that are against oh, well, there's no point in going through that. I'll just sit over here where it's safe forever. I don't get, I, I'm never going to walk through any of that. Okay, I, I understand. We're supposed to eventually get there. But I personally feel like in order to get there without being in denial, never have, you know what I'm saying? In order to really get there and say, you know, I'm pretty good. I'm healed enough to... I don't need to uh, walk through that toxic experience. I don't need that one. I don't need that one. 
the universe will let you know when you don't need it anymore. You know, I'm in therapy about this shit now. I know. I, I, boo-hooing and crying and, and fuck, why does this happen to me? And, okay, I'm responsible for it. Why did I make these choices? And I'm 40-something years old and da 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 But ultimately, I know that I'm right on time. And those were the things that I needed to walk through. Those were the lessons. They will keep on coming until you master each and every layer that you need to master. Now, those are just my spiritual beliefs. Those are the things that resonate with me. And those are also psychological teachings. You know, my therapist informed me of a lot of these psychological patterns years ago. That until you really work on those childhood wounds, the mother and the father wounds, whether it was sexual trauma, emotional trauma, neglect, abandonment, you didn't feel important, whatever it was, until you work on a lot of those things, and I've got both, all of it, then you're going to keep going out and choosing or attracting partners and letting them in that remind you of those early caretakers in some way that trigger you in some way and you're going to repeat that same hurtful trauma over and over again you're going to chase the alcoholic because your father is an alcoholic you're going to try to save them fix them get them to notice you love you see you or if your other parent if, you, if your mother was manipulative or she was cold and withdrawn and she wasn't very nurturing then you're going to go overboard trying to nurture nurture and people please and people please so you guys have to get to the root of these core wounds it's the only way. And I've learned a lot recently in the last two years from Pete Sapper at the Chosen 144 on YouTube, Empath Uprising on Facebook. Fantastic teacher uh, and um, spiritual coach and mentor. I have learned so much from his work in putting together a lot of the pu final puzzle pieces coming full circle in my own life. Um, but... Wow, it's just okay. I just blew my I just blew my fuse for a minute. Let me regroup, okay? <laughs> I will do a part 2 to this, I promise you. And kind of bring it full circle and reinforce everything and narrow it down. But we're talking about triggers, people who trigger us, why it is sometimes necessary to have those people, why it makes sense for people to come and trigger us even though it fucking sucks. Um, we're talking about the spiritual aspects of twin flame theories, kind of what that's all about, um, and how all of that may work together for some people, for some people not. Um, but, you know, these are just my personal, um, and I, I, the people that I've learned certain concepts from, I always try to uh, give those people their credit, as, as I've mentioned my therapist, and I've mentioned Pete Sapper as a person I've learned a lot from, um, you know, I try to give those people their, their, their credit, um, but, you know, bringing it full circle, these, these are just things that I've taken bits and pieces from mentors, I've seen things with my own eyes, my personal observations and experiences, and it's the way I fully understand it for me, okay, and yeah, it's like, I, nobody wants to suffer in toxicity. Absolutely not. And that's a lot of times, you know, if it starts becoming toxic, which a lot of times with the twin flame situation, it does. Um, because they meet each other and it's just like, oh my God, they just want to swallow each other whole. They just want to con consume each other all the time. And that is hard in a 3D way. In a psychological way, it makes us feel bad. Like, oh my God, I'm embarrassed. Oh my God, I'm overboard. I'm overly obsessive. I'm codependent. I'm, I'm full of wounds. I'm, and a lot of it is that. You know, and, and, and it's sad because, well, we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to embarrass them. Um, you know, so it's those dynamics that have to be worked out as well. That stuff has to be sorted out and balanced out. The shadow and everything coming into play. But at the same time, on a spiritual level, it is that overwhelming love and recognition of the twin. Of that beautiful, deep, eternal, healing love that no other has. That's the way I see it. That's the way I feel it. It is that too. Okay? Now, people can say whatever the fuck they want. 
Now don't worry, I'm not going to get too carted away on some fluffy little spiritual cloud here. So the vipers and the narcissists and the predators and the manipulators don't try to fuck with me because I see you coming. They try it. They try it if they think you're woo-woo, you know, floating away on a spiritual cloud somewhere. I didn't say that, that I just sit up and, and think that way all the time. Because, no, I live here in the real world, in the 3D. We live in a very violent place. We live in a place full of snakes and tricksters. And, unfortunately, people, you know, here we are full of ego. We are full of pride and fear and greed and all of these things. So, we have to dips and daps sometimes. I do. I have to dips and daps into my higher frequency energy and my lower frequency energy sometimes and whatever the fucks I need to do to handle the balance and handle the damn situation at hand. <laughs> and that's authentic to me. It just is. But overall, you know what I'm saying? I try to keep it high frequency and self-aware. And I try my best to stay as close to my higher self as I can stay. To me, that's kind of what the twin flame, the whole twin flame thing is about. What I've picked up from mentors, teachers, and observed on my own. Is that ultimately, the two come together to push each other, trigger each other, get all of this purging and all of this shit out because as they were, they could never unite as they were. They cannot do the good works in the world as they were, bound by addiction and trauma and wounds and fear and held back by all of that. That's why they come together and meet, to push that in each other. And it worked. For me, it worked at least because I've been fucking coming out of my shell making these videos for years. And as far as he's concerned, well, we did. We had to go apart, and we were supposed to be doing work. We're supposed to be working on ourselves, our growth. Um, you know, we, we went as far as we could together, and it hurt like hell to go apart. It's like ripping my own guts out. It was like, you know, the way we ended was, was an explanation all in itself. It was neither one of us, and it was both of us at the same time. So confusing, but... I'll come back in a part two, you guys, and um, I'm going to write a few points down so I can make this pretty concise and just, like I say, reinforce what I think about people coming to trigger us, how sometimes it's necessary, and the whole twin flame thing, what I really think and feel about that, um, that they do trigger each other into doing a certain amount of work um, and cleansing um, and ridding themselves of all the bindings of the past beliefs and aiding each other in their very own ascension process um, and, and ascending the levels of consciousness. And if the two do the work, then sometimes they can come back together as a couple and they really are meant to do good work in the world. They really are meant to... Um, be of service to humanity in some way together and um, but that can only happen if they are on the same frequency in the higher frequency of love and all that old dusty toxic control envy fear codependency um, addiction demons all that shit that's all over people um, most of that has to go now I'm not saying that people have to be completely 100% perfectly healed because I don't think anybody will ever be that while we're here on this earth. I don't think we will ever be all the way 100% healed. I think I'm an eternal student and I think we will work on that most of our lifetime. But I think they at least have to be trying. They at least have to be in that ascended mindset that they are on their way and they are now mindful. They are now awake where they used to be asleep. And they are now ready with no fear where they used to be terrified, you see, and and hiding and, and fighting and grasping and clinging and obsessed and all of that. Until a person can stand on their own without all that shit. See, we had a chance to come back together a while back, but it just, the vibration he's choosing to stay on and 
I know he's running into a lot of things, karmic people and lessons. And I know that he's seeing a lot of things go on and things that, oh, you know, and putting some things together. That's, that's what is meant to happen in life when you go out and meet other people. And people come into our life to teach us things that we might not have been able to see before. We might have been really stubborn or just in denial or too depressed or too clouded or too something when we were with our partner to really see it. But yeah, I think the twin flame thing is a fascinating theory. Um, and I think it gets misinterpreted a lot. I think a lot of people want it to be a lot of wishful thinking and a lot of flowery bullshit. And really it's not. To me, it's not. To me, no. It is about finding yourself okay now I know historically here on this planet people got married for convenience they were highly codependent they got married because they needed somebody to cook and clean and they needed somebody to provide well the collective consciousness is ascending rapidly of course we know that times are changing and we are learning more about ourselves now about you know who we are who is what is our identity who are we without a person stuck to us who are we first do we have love for ourselves you know the consciousness is changing it's not like it used to be people don't have to just go cling to somebody's leg for survival anymore so and even if they did nine times out of ten it's not gonna work out if you don't have your freaking childhood wounds healed um, and your ancestral trauma Everything that's carried down in the bloodlines and these generational traumas that have been going on and on and on and on in the bloodlines forever. And there has to be somebody in the family that stops it. There has to be somebody in the family that chooses to stand up and stop it. And um, I went through that as a kid myself. Uh, that story is on my YouTube Oh, of what I had to go through with my own father and him going to prison and um, just crazy. But anyway, guys, I'm going to cut this one. It's getting a bit long, but I'm going to come back in a part two. And we're going to get more into some things about being triggered by other people, how we feel about that, um, how we look at it. And instead of getting really, what does Pete Sapper say at the Chosen 144? Um, instead of getting reactional when we're triggered, we need to look at that again. We need to look at it as a blessing. We need to look at what is the lesson in this. They are doing us a favor. They are giving us the gift of the trigger because that is bringing it to our awareness. Why do I feel this way? What happened to me? What, what is scaring me right now? What is giving me this angry reaction? What is the trigger? And that is going to make us dig that shit up and take a look at it and begin to purge and heal those old wounds. So, yes, I got a lot to talk about, you guys. Um, the way we look at our triggers, why it's necessary. Now, not everybody's on these types of life paths. Not everybody have grew up in trauma. Not everybody's on a twin flame journey. Not everybody has to deal with any of this shit. I don't want to be dealing with it, but apparently that's what I signed up for. Um, damn. But anyway, I'm going to come back in part two, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the whole twin flame thing and how that is important not to, not to put all the focus on the couple. Oh, my God, we're happily ever after, and I have to have you. I'll just die without you. No, you'll never have that person if you're like that. Never. And you'll never, you'll never really be happy spinning out of control trying to find that in another person until you do your work. That's right. Once you've met that twin, it doesn't matter where you're asking, who you can't get away. It doesn't matter who you go be with, who your karmics are. It doesn't matter. You've been activated. Now you know.